Rebel Labour MPs are urging Sir Keir Starmer to support changes to the Brexit deal agreed on Christmas Eve. A report written by left-leaning group Another Europe is Possible claims there is a series of critical failings in Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. The report, titled The Fundamental Problems in the UK-EU Trade Deal and How It Can Be Reformed, claims there is a risk and uncertainty for jobs and investment arising from the potential for tariffs on UK exports if Westminster uses Brexit to deregulate. It also claims the Brexit deal has crippled food exports and barriers to trade resulting from a lack of agreement on food and animal welfare regulation. The report also warns there are major structural problems in Northern Irish supply chains on food and medical supplies resulting from the UK's exit from the single market. It comes as Northern Ireland's Health Minister Robin Swan has voiced concern about the supply of medicines to the region as a result of a looming Brexit regulatory barrier to securing stock from the rest of the UK. Under the terms of the Brexit Withdrawal Agreement, Northern Ireland and Great Britain are to operate under different regulatory rules for medicines and medical devices. The report said the UK should develop a new and progressive relationship with the EU and recommends a number of actions to achieve this and rebuild ties. This includes the harmonization with EU standards, with a no-downgrading principle written into future deals and a mutual rights agreement for UK and EU citizens to reinstate free movement rights. The report also asks UK ministers to promote a democratic economy, with state investment and industrial strategy sitting alongside strong protections against cronyism. Mr. Starmer, a Europhile, has been slammed by some in the party for not speaking out strongly against the damaging effects it has had on the UK economy. Nadia Whitom, Labour MP for Nottingham East, said, This important new report shows what a disastrous trade deal the Conservatives have struck with the EU, and why we shouldn't back away from campaigning for an alternative. We need a deal that is committed to high regulation, protects manufacturing jobs, and restores citizens' rights and freedom of movement. This isn't about defending the status quo, but delivering the treaty we need to transition to an environmentally sustainable and democratic economy. 6.15 a.m. Update, Nicola Sturgeon suffers blow to EU dreams with Scottish budget's £40 billion black hole. Nicola Sturgeon's Scottish government has suffered a major blow in its hopes to rejoin the EU, as its fiscal deficit soars. New data from the Institute for Fiscal Studies, IFS, will be released this week, showing in 2020-21 the gap between public spending and tax revenues has risen to 22-25% to of Scotland's gross domestic product. It comes as a blow to the SNP's hopes to rejoin the EU, as the deficit has hit eight times the acceptable limit set by the bloc which is 3% of GDP. The IFS said the rise in GDP in cash terms represents a deficit of more than £40 billion. Scotland's gap is nearly three times the level of the Scottish deficit the year before, with 2019-20's levels at eight. 6%, 5.15 a.m. Update, Italy reaches coronavirus vaccine milestone but still short of target. Italy has reached a coronavirus vaccine milestone with 5 million people given full doses of the jab. The country is only the third EU member state to fully vaccinate 5 million people, after Germany and France, and has given at least one dose to around 17. 3 million people, but Italy will still fall short of its target set by Italian General Francesco Paolo Figliolo, the country's COVID-19 emergency commissioner. He set a goal earlier this month of administering at least 500,000 jabs a day by the end of April, but statistician Giovanni Sebastiani was quoted by the ANSA news agency as saying the daily vaccination rate should reach 350,000 per day by the end of the month. Fabrizio Curcio, head of the country's civil defense agency, told Bloomberg, we will reach half a million daily shots by early May, but what will matter will be keeping it over time. This is crucially linked to the availability of vaccines. 4.05 a.m. Update, China, EU should stop sowing discord in South China Sea. A spokesperson of the Chinese mission to the EU blamed the bloc for rising tensions in the South China Sea, saying security risks mainly come from outside the region. 
They said, the South China Sea should not become a tool for certain countries to contain and suppress China, still less a wrestling ground for major power rivalry. It follows the EEAS saying tensions in the region, including the recent presence of large Chinese vessels at Whitsun Reef, endanger peace and stability. 3 a.m. Update, EU COVID-19 death rates are now 15 times higher than the UK's, shocking new report reveals. EU citizens are currently 15 times more likely to die of COVID-19 than those of the UK, a shocking new analysis has indicated. Pro-Brexit think tank Facts for EU said its new report explains why many countries are now seeking to bypass the European Commission, as well as disproving claims that Britain could have continued to pursue an independent vaccine policy had it not quit the bloc. Using figures from Our World in Data and Johns Hopkins University, facts for EU's experts suggest the likelihood of dying from COVID-19, based on a seven-day rolling average, was 15 times higher within the EU-27 than it was in the UK. Former Brexit Party MEP Ben Habib said facts for EU's revelations left the bloc with nowhere to hide. He told Express.co.uk, when the pandemic first hit, many were quick to identify the relative failings of our government compared to those in Europe. But of one thing there is now no doubt, the UK has developed and administered a world-beating vaccination program. 1.30 a.m. Update, EU blasts Beijing for endangering peace in South China Sea. The EU has blamed Beijing for endangering peace in the South China Sea and urged all parties to abide by a 2016 tribunal ruling which rejected most of China's claim to sovereignty in the sea. 12.15 a.m. Update, EU to welcome vaccinated U.S. tourists. Ursula von der Leyen has told a U.S. newspaper the EU will welcome American tourists this summer if they have had a coronavirus vaccine. The European Commission president said, the Americans, as far as I see, use European Medicines Agency approved vaccines. This will enable free movement and travel to the European Union. She said restrictions would be lifted depending on the epidemiological situation in the U.S. But the situation is improving in the United States, as it is, hopefully, also in the European Union, Ms. von der Leyen added. 11.40 p.m. Update, British wine trade battered by strict Brexit rules, bloody nightmare. Philip Cox, owner of Romanian winery Cramel Recas, has decried trade rules for EU exports to the U.K. Speaking to website Wine Searcher, he said, a lot of the post-Brexit changes are happening under the British public's noses. To be succinct, shipping wine to the UK has become a bloody nightmare. Every order requires a mountain of paperwork, customs declarations, preferential origin certificates, importer labeling. Exporting has become expensive, time-wasting and cumbersome. The heightened administrative costs have forced me to ditch some of my smaller UK customers. Dylan Donnelly takes over from Stephen Brown, 8 p.m. update, EU will agree to a post-Brexit deal on financial services because it needs London. John Garvey, global head of financial services at PwC, told The Telegraph it is unlikely the EU will make any agreement in the short term. He said, so, I think there will be some kind of deal because the continent will need access to the London market. Last week, the EU's Commissioner for Financial Services said the bloc wasn't under any pressure to help firms in London access its market. Mairead McGuinness warned there would not be any agreement if the UK plans on different rules for the industry. 6.30 p.m. Update, Brexit Row, furious fishermen turn against Boris ahead of elections, it's a betrayal. Brexit fishermen have turned against Boris Johnson over the Prime Minister's trade deal, with many vowing not to vote for the Conservatives on May 6. Under the trade deal secured by Boris Johnson in December, the EU was allowed to keep 75% of the value of the fish it now catches in UK waters, with 25% being returned to British fishermen over the transition period. From 2026, Britain will be able to cut quotas or exclude boats in a zone of 6 to 12 nautical miles. It is also believed UK boats will have access to an extra £145 million of fishing quota every year by this period.
but Mr. Johnson is facing a crisis after Cornish fishermen turn against the Conservative Party ahead of the local elections next month. 5.35 p.m. Update, Boris Talking Bull. No one voted for green rules which will choke UK farming Stephen Place. Boris Johnson, let out a bull in his 2019 election campaign, in a typical political stunt aimed at the farming community. Making all sorts of post-Brexit promises, his rhetoric just over a year later has changed beyond all recognition. Buy British, has now turned to buy green. Sadly, for farmers and in particular dairy and livestock farmers, this is going to involve a drastic reduction in production. This green ambition to cut carbon emissions by 78% and by 2035 will be catastrophic and undeliverable on so many levels. But it seems British farming will bear the brunt. 4.35 p.m. Update. Panicked France demands urgent access to UK waters as anger erupts. France has called for a quick implementation of the post-Brexit trade agreement regarding mutual access to fishing waters following protests by French fishermen. French fishermen block trucks trying to bring in catches from Britain at Boulogne-sur-Mer, France's busiest fishing hub, on Thursday. They argue the Brexit deal is a sham on access in place since Britain left the European Union on January 1. France claims the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, granted licenses to only 22 of the 120 French boats seeking permission to fish between 6 and 12 nautical miles from the British coast. In a joint statement, Europe Minister Clement Bone and Maritime Minister Annick Jorardan said, we're acting within the spirit of European solidarity and cooperation with the UK, but the urgency demands an acceleration of our collective efforts. A full granting of access licenses for British waters, and a quick resolution of crucial questions including the use of forward bases, must be resolved as soon as possible. 4.10 p.m. Update, Brexit Britain outwits EU to buy extra 100 meters jabs as bloc remains stuck in vaccine battle. Brexit Britain has once again outwitted the EU to secure 100 million coronavirus vaccines, it has emerged. The UK used the current deadlock between Brussels chiefs and AstraZeneca over supplies to seize the moment. This inaction reportedly engaged French vaccine manufacturer Valneva, which put the UK at the head of the queue for their jabs too. Leaked internal minutes from an EU ambassador's meeting revealed the fury its decision provoked from Brussels. The Mail on Sunday reported how ambassadors blasted a deal proposed by Valneva as it so far remains below expectations for EU member states. 3.30 p.m. Update, London snub as Joe Biden claimed Brussels could be capital of free world. London was ignored by U.S. President Joe Biden as he stated Brussels had a legitimate claim to the title of capital of the free world. Joe Biden will travel to the U.K. and Belgium in his first overseas trip as U.S. President in June as he tries to rejuvenate transatlantic relations. The White House said Mr. Biden would attend the G7 summit in Cornwall, UK, and hold bilateral meetings with other leaders, including Prime Minister Boris Johnson. After that, the President will travel to the NATO summit in Brussels, before attending a US-EU summit. Jen Psaki, White House Press Secretary, said Mr. Biden's trip would reinforce the US's commitment to multilateralism, as well as NATO and the principle of collective defense. The Biden administration has made clear it would like to see a revitalization of the Western military alliance, which had been undermined by factors including Donald Trump's attacks, criticism by French President Emmanuel Macron and tensions over Turkey. 2.30 p.m. Update, Portugal expat says Brexit and COVID hit more than just Algrave. Portugal, like many nations in Europe, has been impacted by the double whammy of Brexit and COVID. However, according to one expat, it is more than just the tourist resorts which are suffering amid travel-focused restrictions. Portugal is a popular destination for Britons, whether it is for a weekly summer holiday or something a little more long-term, such as purchasing property or even relocating to the nation. In the last year, the nation has seen a dramatic drop in tourist foot traffic due to the ongoing coronavirus restrictions. 
1.30 p.m. Update, Brexit warning, British pensioners in Spain face healthcare cost hike. Brexit has seen British pensioners living in Spain straddled with soaring healthcare costs amid a rush to register under new residency rules. British expats who have not registered as Spanish residents now face a bureaucratic maze in order to obtain access to state-funded health care. Sue Wilson, chair of the campaign organization Bremain in Spain has warned that UK pensioners have been hit with hefty medical fees as they await sign-off on their paperwork, known as an S-1 form, which would grant them access to the Spanish national health system. Ms. Wilson told Express.co.uk, some people are paying for medical care that perhaps they wouldn't need to had they got their residencia sorted out sooner. 12.30 p.m. Update, EU plans to leave Scotland with less effective independence, Nicola Sturgeon wants Scotland to join the EU as an independent member state, but Brussels plans to leave her country with even less effective independence than it has currently as part of the UK, it has been claimed. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has insisted that her plan for Scotland to leave the UK and join the EU has not been damaged by the bloc's vaccine debacle and the European Commission's threats to withhold Britain's supplies. Earlier this month, the SNP leader said that most Scots were only worried about getting their jabs and were not concerned about the shambles on the continent, that has seen the EU threaten an export ban to countries like Britain with much higher vaccination rates. Although she acknowledged when pressed that the UK had played a blinder on its procurement program, she denied that the stark contrast with the EU had made her independence in Europe policy less attractive. 